Well, you get remarried uh, in 2005 to right. Patrice. Right. Um, you know, you guys have uh, four kids together, right? Right. Um, and you're going on with your career at this point. Uh, by 2006, Isaiah Thomas becomes a coach of the Knicks. Right. Uh, did that make a big difference? You mean, uh, hell yeah, it did. Um, I think I think people got to understand why he became coach of the team. Like it, it, it just began. It just started to be become more and more of a pressure situation for everybody. Um, because at the time when I got there, he was like the GM of the team. He was like the he was the president of the team. He bought in me. He bought in a, a bunch of guys. He bought in Larry Brown. Um, and I think at some point. The owner was like, shit, you run the show. This, you put this shit together, so you you know, you know, run it. So then he started being the president and uh, the coach. And I just think he felt a lot of pressure. We always feeling the pressure to try to make something happen. They were booing us every night in the garden. That was, that was, uh, <laughs> that was, that was tough to deal with, man, for real. Yeah, I mean, the Knicks hadn't won a championship since, I mean, when was the last year that the Knicks actually won the finals? Shit, you tell me. Back when, I don't know, Clyde, was it Clyde Frazier? Here we go. I just looked it up. I, I thought it was this. It was the year I was born, 1973. That's what I'm saying. Who Was, was it Clyde Frazier out there with them? Or, I, I think so, Like, man. come on, man. Like, that's a, that's a hell of a drought. And Knicks yeah. fans, they don't play that shit, bro. Like, that's a serious town. Like, They'll love you hard, man, but they'll hate you just as hard, bro. Like, it's crazy. Well, I mean, by, by 2006, you actually had, you know, some strong numbers. Yeah. Uh, you know, 19.6 uh, points per game, 7.1 rebounds. Um, you actually started 81 games. Yeah. Uh, so so you are doing well. Uh, but then in 2007, when you show up to training camp, you were just really overweight. Yeah, man, it's crazy because... I want to say, uh, was that the year? Was that the year Zach Randolph came? I think so. Yeah, I think that was the year Zach came. Man, that's when I really start. Honestly, that's when I start experiencing like knee problems. I kind of like tweaked my knee at the end of the season, and I thought it was no big deal. And I didn't. I tried to kind of keep the same regiment that I normally would have, which was I would chill half the summer. I was just chilling, really. Just let my body bounce back from the summer. And then I would just go hard right before the season started. And I would use training camp as a way to really get myself into shape like a lot of guys would do. Um, this is pre-LeBron and all this stuff where dudes got these living trainers and stuff like that. Like guys kind of had it down to a science. I got this long to chill and then I'll ramp it up, you know what I'm saying, around this time. Well, I mean, it just, it was harder to do at that time because my knee was hurting a little bit and I just kind of, you know, it was hard to bounce back. It honestly was hard to bounce back. And then at that point, I think we got Zebo, um, and we just really kind of didn't mesh well together. Um, that along with all of the off the court shit, man. I, I mean, it takes a toll on you, right? Because I think that year you were making ten and a half million, right? And you were supposed to get eleven million next year, so it was kind of affecting the Knicks salary cap. You yeah. know, and since, you know, you were making so much and, you know, you were a little overweight and the team wasn't winning. It's like the fans were, like you said, like they will love you, but they'll absolutely hate you at the same absolutely. time. Yeah. And I, and I get that. I understand it. I mean, they still show me love when I go to New York. Like I get a whole lot of love in New York. Um, but so I understand, man. I understand what it's like to have your favorite team and just, and to just want them to win. And hey, man, if you helping us win, great. I'm your number one fan. But if you not, man, get the hell out of here. Get out the way. So I get it, man. I get it. I'm not mad at all. Now, was it this year that you scored your second three-pointer, like in the history of your career? Probably I guess you're so. two yeah, in Milwaukee. Right, yeah, against Milwaukee yeah. Uh, when they went into overtime. And I guess you're, throughout, throughout your entire career, You've gotten two for two. I'm 100 percent, <laughs> baby. I'm 100 percent. I'm 100 percent. But you do not. You, you, I guess you just never shoot three pointers. This is before. Like this game now is different, Vlad. Like honestly, like so many guys, I, it wasn't just an anomaly. Like a lot of dudes could shoot. Like it's the NBA. Like of course I could shoot. Like I'm a professional basketball player. You know what I mean? But my what I did very very well was use my strength and my size 
close to the basket, rebound, put put balls up. Like that's kind of that's kind of more so how you played back then. Like you kind of stuck to what you what you uh, like your makeup was. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was able to shoot the ball. I had a really good touch. I think that's what. And it's crazy because that's what attracted a lot of the teams to me early on. But just when you get in those positions, man, coaches want to win. They don't got time to experiment and try to figure out who can shoot and who can make shots. They got their shooters. They got their big men. And that's just kind of how they, you know, how they did it back then.